welcome back VST here and this tech guys in this video today I'm going to test the 50 megapixel and 200 megapixel photo capabilities on the latest update so I'm using the April update with the biggest camera update guys there was a lot of requests for me to test the 50 megapixel and the 200 megapixel one so please enjoy the next photo samples and also don't forget to comment and let me know what you think down below Let's explore some 50 megapixel scenario guys, but I want to start with the fact that Samsung is not actually the first company to offer a 200 megapixel sensor. We had a 200 MPX in the Xiaomi 12T Pro and in some other phones also last year. And also 200 megapixel guys is really rather extreme. Just think of the fact that one of the biggest Android competitor Apple iPhones, iPhone 14 Pro is still using 48 megapixels for its main sensor. Something also very important guys, that's the concept of pixel binning. I want to share a bit more information. This is really extremely important for us to understand what this means and how it's used. Pixel binning means that the sense is actually grouping together or binning together adjacent pixel to make one larger pixel. You might think why this happens, what is the purpose? Besides of course reducing noise, think of the fact that the lenses that we have and the sense that we have in the smartphone cameras are really small compared to a standard DSLR or mirrorless camera and actually pixel binning tries to elevate this whole experience but high resolution not always means better quality but let's stay on the pixel binning topic guys there are several options you can bend them or group them two by two or four by four or three by three what we have in the S23 Ultra when using the 200 megapixel sensor is binning together 16 pixels into one, which means that effectively, guys, we are taking 16 individual pixels and they're grouped into one. And then, of course, we can go and use up to 200 megapixel this whooping, whooping resolution. But things get a bit more complicated. Uh, and usually when color is involved, these image sensors, they have color filters to sense the color and group the color. So in fact, we are always going to get a color resolution of 12 megapixels. So let's stay on the topic, guys. There are also some things that you will lose when using 200 megapixels so the macro mode will not work and you're also stuck by using just the main lens if you use the expert row or the pro mode you will be only limited to record at 50 megapixels so the 200 megapixel is just available as an option from using the standard camera and you can do this only on the main sensor and now it's time to check the 200 megapixel photos guys so what i'm gonna do i'm going to shoot several 200 megapixel photos guys and then zoom them out to the maximum to check the level of details guys and again i expect you in the comments down below to let me know what you think is this a good job is this a poor job well let's check together as you already know, Samsung released a huge almost one gigabyte update, which focuses really a lot on the camera. Indeed, they mentioned to have improved line shape bedding noise in the sky in mid low light when shooting a high pixel in low mid light and also overall sharpness to be optimized during high pixel shooting and intermediate blurring was improved through OS stabilization. Let's check guys some of these 200 megapixel samples. Now, the biggest question is, do we need to shoot 200 megapixel photos and honestly i'll say no not really but if you still want to capture like this extra level of detail provided you have some nice scenarios then you can use it but you'll have to take into account the pictures are going to be like 30 megabytes are really very heavy in case you need to transfer them send them somewhere on the cloud so that's a kind of limitation and it might be a bit of an overkill also sometimes scrambling details and resulting in overall smudginess so it means that sometimes even shooting at 12 or even 50 megapixels will get you a better quality but okay i want to show you some examples where i compared a 50 megapixel to 200 megapixel where i believe the 200 megapixel shine i'm going to show you one photo guys and i'm going to focus on some very specific elements to let you know what i think so here the left photo is the one shot on 200 megapixel and the right photo is shot on 50 megapixel so far so good but if i start zooming in guys you're gonna see that the 50 megapixel photo is slowly starting to lose some of the details in case i was really fascinated by this photo i'm gonna let you know why see here guys you can even not see these fine detail uh, details here the metal banding all it's gone even here guys see the leather there are some elements that are absolutely not seen on the resolution of a 50 megapixel photo and of course 200 megapixel is really giving you some greater detail and i thought maybe that's a mistake let me check something else well i have two 
more examples for you to show where I do believe the 200 megapixel really shine. And this here, this logo. So when you start zooming in, the 50 megapixel picture will lose the detail, all right? Which of course means that in this particular case, and that's not a very ideal case, the 200 megapixel still provides a better detail. Even comparing here the text, you can just see how much more information we still get. And the 50 megapixel photo is just at some point becoming almost unusable. Now, should you shoot your cats and dogs and kids on 200 megapixel? Probably not. But if you want to use 200 megapixel for shooting at some landscape, then I would say this probably will be a good thing to do. And I really hope that you like videos like this. If that's the case, guys, sub for the channel, leave a like down below and stay safe until we meet in one of my next videos. With that said, VST over and bye.